Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today with no makeup on because I'm going to do a full face semi first impressions of e.l.f. makeup. A little while ago I did a video uh, sort of testing out some of your recommendations. A lot of people recommended e.l.f. products and look, to be fair, I think e.l.f. hasn't really been on my radar for a couple of reasons. One, when I first tried that highlighter that was really, really popular, that sort of domed highlighter, I really didn't like it. and. That was a thing that everyone raved about and it sort of turned me off trying more. Secondly, there wasn't a great range in Australia up until fairly recently. So now we're getting sort of most of the releases, not all of them, but the majority of them anyway. Um, and also, I think because I'm now, how old am I? 36. Um, I feel like this is the sort of makeup that I would have used a lot of when I was in, at uni or in high school. But now I'm sort of at the stage where I sort of prefer quality over quantity, if that makes sense. So e.l.f. hasn't really been something that's super on my radar. But since I got so many recommendations to try certain products, and I did try three products in that recommendations video and did quite like them, I thought, look, I'm ordering pretty much a full face of products and I'm going to test them all out. Um, luckily, the e.l.f. Australia website had a buy one, get one free sale. So I literally bought 16 items, but eight of them were free. It was the cheaper items that were free. So I think it ended up coming down to like 35% off, but I bought a lot of products. Let's, let's just put it out there. I'm going to go through some of the products that I bought. I'm going to apply some on my face as a first impressions, but this is going to be sort of like one of a few e.l.f dedicated videos. I don't know what other videos I'm going to do, but I know it's going to end with a sort of roundup of what I think are the best products and worst products that I've tried. So if you have any recommendations of what you want to see more in-depth reviews of or wear tests or I don't know, whatever, uh, let me know. But this is the first impressions full face. Then in a couple of videos time, I'll end with um, my sort of recap after I've used these products for a couple of weeks straight and I have a good idea of what I think about them. I'm quickly going to run through the products that I've ordered. I've got the primer. This is the one that everyone talks about. It's a Paulus Putty Primer in the Universal Sheer sort of, this is the original one. I have played with this a little bit because we did a video on it um, on Beauty News a couple of years ago, but I haven't like used it much. I don't really like primers, so I was sort of hesitant to buy this, but I did, I thought I'll try it. It's a very popular product. For other base products, I did get two foundations. I've got the Camo CC Cream, so that's a liquid foundation. I'm hoping it's my shade. Shade matching online was atrocious. Um, and then I got the powder foundation as well. So I'm going to use one of these today. In my recommendations video, I did um, talk about this product. It's the uh, Camo Concealer Matte Finish. I really do like it. The shade's too light for me, but it works really well. So I do like this. But what I'm going to try in this video is what a lot of people were recommending. I'm surprised how many people brought this one up? It's the Flawless Brightening Concealer. So I'm going to try this. It's supposed to be sheerer. I think a little bit more illuminating or something. I also got the Halo Glow Setting Powder. Now this is supposed to set your makeup, but also add a bit of a luminosity, which I like the idea of. I do have oily skin, so I need my base to be set. But I also don't necessarily want it just to be like matte, 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 matte. So... A few people recommended this as well, and I thought, look, I'll, I'll give it a try. This is the shade Light. Also, my hands were tired because the translucent sort of matte version was out of stock, but um, this is a little bit more unique in my collection, so I thought I wanted to try things that I don't really have a lot of. With face coloring, I'm going to use the bronzer that I used in the recommendations video, so it's the put putty bronzer in the shade Tan Lines. Um, it's very sheer, but I like the color of this. That's good. And I also picked up a blush. Now I didn't want to buy this shade. This is the shade Barley. It's quite dark, but I will apply it she sheerly. Um, when I waited for the sale, um, the shade that I wanted, which I'll put on the screen because I don't remember the name. It's like an orangey shade. It was out of stock and all the other light shades were out of stock. So I had pretty much three to pick from and they're all the deeper shades. And this tone, that sort of orangey burnt orange tone, I thought it's a nice sort of autumn sort of shade and um, something a little bit more unique. So I'll try to make this work. I don't know how well I'm going to do. Um, I didn't get a highlighter. Again, I really dislike that baked highlighter and that was the only highlighter sort of on the website. Um, but what I might do is go in with a bit of an eyeshadow. So I did pick up one of these um, bite size eyeshadow quads. This is cream and sugar. It's the most basic, boring color story. But I thought, look, I want something that I can wear every day. And this is if I'm going to buy something like this, I want it to be something I can throw in my travel bag and um, bring, 
you know, to my parents' house if I'm spending the night. Um, and yeah, I didn't really want like an, the all green one. I know a lot of people rave about the all green one. The colors do like look like they're my kind of colors, but this would get more wear out of it. Other eye products I picked up, I picked up two of the No Budge Shadow Sticks. Um, I got the shade Champagne Crystal and Magnetic Pull. So one that's more like a champagne, one that's more of like a mauve um, cool tone shade. Um, I use these types of products on the daily basis. So um, when I am not reviewing eyeshadow or not putting much effort into my eye makeup, a stick eyeshadow product that I can just sort of blend out with my finger is sort of what I use on a daily basis. So I thought two of these, I like both shades, they look nice. And then as a bit of a something fun, um, I also got the Liquid Metallic Eyeshadow in Comet. So again, this is like a rose goldy sort of um, champagne color. I thought that's really pretty. If I want a little bit more shimmer and sparkle, again, this is something I'd wear on a daily basis. Just put a little bit on, buff it out with a bit of a brush and um, I've got my sparkly eye. So these are sort of things I wear on a daily basis. The mascara I picked up was the Big Mood Mascara. This is actually in deep brown. Again, I've got so many black mascaras. I thought I'd go for something a little bit different. Um, so deep brown, I'm going to try that today. And I got the No Budge Retractable Eyeliner in Coffee. I love a brown eyeliner. That's the color I wear most of the time. So I thought this was handy, um, nice and affordable as well. And then I accidentally bought two of the Micro Brow Pencil. These are the ultra precise brow pencil, both in neutral brown. I don't know why I added two to the cart. Whoops a daisy. I also have the Instant Lift Brow Pencil in the same shade. This is a bigger pencil. Um, and this is I tried in the recommendations video and I really do like it. So I'm gonna use a combination of them today. Lastly, I've got two lip products. One recommendation was the Glossy Lip Stain in Berry Queen. There was also a red that I was looking at, but it was sold out. So Berry Queen was a recommended shade. Um, and I really wanted to try the Hydrating Core Lip Shine. So. Um, this is like a tinted lip balm. I'll open it and show you, but it's got a little like heart in the middle. It's very cute. And the shade is happy. So it's just like a rosy nude shade. I thought this is a nice everyday shade. So bold, nude, there we go. So yeah, I've missed out on highlighter and like finishing spray, but I think I've got everything else. I also didn't get an eyeshadow primer because they last way too long and I have too many of them, but also because I got those stick products and the sort of liquid eyeshadow. So I figure they are sort of eyeshadow primers in one. Um, so I'll put one down as, as a base and maybe put uh, the quarter over the top or something like that. All right, let's zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna put the putty primer on. I believe you just use your fingers. So it's a big pot and it's supposed to be a dupe for the toucher one. Um, yeah, I don't really, look, I, I do have pores. So I do like a sort of pore filling blurring primer, but I never feel like they are worth the extra step on me. As long as I use like a foundation or a powder that sort of doesn't emphasize pores, I find that it's sort of enough. Um, and this sort of step, I don't have time or patience for. So this just feels like a moisturizer. Like it's not, I don't see it really filling pores, doing anything amazing. I will clip my hair back. I know it's frustrating when people don't, but it just feels like a pot moisturizer. Like it's fine. I thought it was gonna feel a lot more sort of silicony. All right, because I want to use that illuminating loose powder, I think I'm going to use the liquid foundation because powder foundation and then powder over the top is not generally the best move. I don't think, I think it's a bit drying. So I'm going to try this and hope, hope to hell the color match is all right for me. Could be good. Uh, got my damp sponge. Looks a little bit dark, but oh, it's not too bad actually. I think I've done a reasonably good job. I think it's a tiny bit dark for this time of year. This applies really nicely. Nice and smooth. Enough coverage to sort of deal with my redness, even out my skin tone a bit, hopefully cover up some of these guys. I also really like the packaging of this because once you get down to the bottom, you can sort of squeeze it all out and pump out the last uh, little bit, but also the pump, you can do like, um, fraction of a pump. It's not one that you have to do a full pump, so you can get a small amount out, um, which is good. All right, color match looks really nice. The finish is really nice. It doesn't look, you know, greasy. It doesn't look too dry. It doesn't emphasize pores. It covers 
most things okay blemishes it doesn't cover but that's what concealer is for so we'll use some of the um camo concealer for that i think it just applies really smoothly and i could build it up but i don't want to i don't like having just a full sort of heavy face to makeup i'd prefer to just do some little concealing here and there but i really want to go in with this because i'm intrigued i've heard people say it's really lovely for like low makeup days but yeah so it's like a click pen brightening concealer my shade is i mentioned the shade before light 26n um it's got one of these pen things but to be fair i don't love these this form of application but Let's do it. Come on, crew. Oh, there it is. It's coming out. So put a little bit under the eyes. I do have a bit of darkness in the inner corners. So I do like to put, even on a daily basis, if I'm not wearing much makeup, I like to put a little bit of concealer just to make me look a little bit more awake. So nice. I'm going to use a sponge again just to sponge that in. I think that's a nice amount of coverage. I actually don't like concealers that have like crazy amount of coverage because I feel like they look too heavy but this one looks very hydrating. Look at that shine. Super hydrating. Nice. Yeah that glow. So it's a very very glowy concealer. If you've got dry skin I think you would love this. It actually looks really pretty. On me, I know that's going to crease in like two seconds flat, so I need to set this pretty quickly. But um, I think it's a really beautiful finish and it looks quite high end. Like if someone said this is from like Charlotte Tilbury, I'd be like, yeah, I believe that. But for my blemishes, I'm going to go in with the camo concealer because I need a little bit more. Um, I don't need it to be highlighted and, and sort of moisturized. I need it to be covered and set. So let's just go in these areas a little bit of sort of scarring on my chin from years of breakout. Problem is this is a bit light, so it's not really my skin tone. I got the wrong shade. So this is the shade medium peach, but you can see it's actually very, very, very fair. Um, and because it's so fair, I don't really want to build it up too much because it's going to just look like a white patch but you can see that though that concealer adds a lot more coverage than like this concealer does but I, I prefer this on a daily basis I think it looks nice all right putty bronzer time and again this is a product that I have used before I'm just using it on a buffing foundation buffing brush from Nabla I'm gonna see it's you've got to pick up a lot of product to make this actually show, show up on your skin it's very very look let's apply some with my finger super sheer super sheer i just wish this i like the texture of it i like the blendability it looks nice i like the color of this um it's a nice sort of this particular shade tan lines is a is like a neutral sort of shade so it's not too orange it's not too cool toned i find if they're too cool toned they make they make my skin look really muddy um so i sort of need a little bit of warmth neutral bronzers sort of work best for me I just think this is really frustrating how low the pigmentation is and if you try to pick it up in a brush you're really not picking up enough so that's my only frustration with this and I feel like because the pot is so small um beautiful effect like that's really lovely but the like needing to like layer and dig it out almost and the pot's so small I'll probably go through this in like two months of daily use which it's fine. It was like, I think it was like $14 in Australia, $12, like not much. Um, and if you get on sale or buy one, get one free, it's even better. But um, yeah, just super sheer. Lovely color, easy to blend, gives a bit of dimension to the face, but super sheer. I did hear that the blushes are a lot more pigmented, which is the opposite of what I want because I don't want my bronzer to be like super pigmented. I just don't want to have to like put heaps on. I like using less is more. Um, so this shade Bali, this is why I don't want it to be too pigmented. This is super, super, super uh, dark color. So I'm going to go in with the same brush. I'm just wiping any excess off. Oh, look, it's not, it's not super, it's more pigmented than the bronzer, but not crazy pigmented. It's not a crazy pigmented blush. I actually really like this shade. I'm actually not mad about getting the darker shade because I feel like 
with this sort of sheer formula, if you want to apply it with a brush and not your fingers, you actually need something with a bit of color to show up and actually transfer onto the brush and then onto your face. This applies, it's not like a matte, it does feel, like it's not a, it doesn't feel like a powder. It definitely feels like I'm applying a mousse, not a cream, like not a shiny cream, but a nice sort of mousse to powder consistency. I love that color. That color is really pretty. Matches my t-shirt that I'm wearing. Nice sort of autumn color. Bit of a statement blush, but nothing too like vibrant, if that makes sense. It's like a pumpkin-y color. I don't hate it. I think it's pretty and it blends really nicely. Like seamless blend. Probably applied it too far in, but very pretty. So I don't hate this. I'd still want to go back and try the lighter orangey shade, but I feel like, again, it's going to be a similar situation to the bronzer where I need to like layer it and pack it on just to get it to show up. I feel like a darker color is actually a smarter move. If you prefer to apply a thinner layer and just sort of buff it in, I think the darker colors are probably better. All right, before I do eyes, I'm going to get onto brows and I'm going to use a combo of the micro pencil and the brow lift pencil. They both have spoolies, which is great. Um, what I think I might do... They're both in the neutral brown shade, which I know matches me quite well from using this pencil. I'm just going to use this to sort of fill in the bulk of my brow, which it does really nicely. It's a nice amount of pigmentation. Like it's not too bold where you're like, oh my God, block brows. Um, but it's not too sheer that you need to sort of really build it up. It's just a nice sort of everyday brow pencil and super affordable. I think it's like $7 full price in Australia. So this is a nice sort of everyday brow pencil, but I do like to go in with a micro and just sort of um, mimic some hairs at the front. This is, yeah, this is doing the job well. And again, the color match is really nice. Nice effect, nice color, nice effect, nice affordable brow pencil. Back when I was starting my, like using brow products and I was buying a lot of drugstore, they did not have nice cool colors like this. I, my eyebrows were like permanently orange, so Come a long way. Totally forgot to powder, so let's get onto the Halo Glow setting powder. I'm actually really excited to see how this looks. All right, so it's one of those powders I had to pull a sticker off. It's got a little um, section with some holes and you can also turn it around to stop it from coming out, which is great. I love it when there's a mechanism to sort of make it a bit neater. Um, and it says pour powder here for a Halo Glow. So I'm gonna pour some powder in the lid. I'm just going to start with setting under the eyes because that's what can tend to crease if I don't set it quick enough. Just do a light dusting all over. I'm not seeing any like crazy glow, but it's not looking really powdery matte either. So I think... See how it keeps like a bit of luminosity to the skin. So it looks like it's set, but it doesn't look like it's super powdery. So I like this. I think this is nice. I've got an illuminating sort of setting powder from Laura Mercier and it sort of just adds too much glow. Whereas this is just, this is sort of just keeping the natural radiance to the skin um, without mattifying it too much, but still setting the makeup. So I think that's actually really nice. I think that's a good product. So far, I'm liking this. And again, once you keep the natural radiance, you don't really feel like putting a highlighter on necessarily because you still have a bit of sort of natural glow coming in. All right, I'm going in with the No Budge uh, Shadow Stick in Champagne Crystal because this is the one that I was most interested in. Um, so it is just this beautiful, soft, shimmery champagne color. I might swatch the other one I got as well. So this is Magnetic Pool, which is definitely more bold nice i like the tips of them as well of course that's not going to last forever but you can also sharpen it at the base most um sort of twist up products have this sort of sharpener at the base um and these look look they're a little bit wobbly in there um but they look quite high end in terms of the packaging which is quite nice so let's see how this applies just directly on the eye i love an everyday twinkle this is really pretty not opaque at all very 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 sheer so you can definitely see the skin through it so it's just adds a bit of a twinkle to the eye i think if you had really sort of discolored lids you'd need to put a primer underneath this just 
because I can see sort of some veining and stuff happening underneath, but I like this twinkle, it's very pretty. I'm gonna go in with a quad just to sort of finish that up. I'm gonna use that sort of cream matte shade just very lightly in the crease, just to sort of tidy it up a little bit. Blend out the edges a little bit. And this is just an Ella Cosmetics E22 brush, just a little fluffy one. And I might go in with this shade here, the darker shimmer um, on the same brush, just to, I don't know, play with it and see what it's like. Put on the outer corner a little bit. Very subtle. I've heard people rave about these. I don't think they're the greatest formula of eyeshadow from what I can tell but they're but they're nice looking and they're very affordable. I think I've heard so much hype about these that I'm sort of expecting them to be like super buttery and super beautiful but they're just sort of basic eyeshadows from what I can tell. I'm going to use that quad a lot more and let you know how I feel about it but right now I'm like it's it's fine. No budge retractable eyeliner this is in the shade coffee. There we go, it's just a dark brown. Nice, very, very fine tip, similar to the micro brow pencil. Uh, I'm gonna see if it works on the waterline. I feel like it's a bit dry for the waterline. Yeah, it doesn't really transfer much. Transfers a tiny bit, but not, it's not a creamy waterline pencil by any means, no. Nah. No, nah, not really showing up. Okay, so we're using it for a bit of a sort of subtle wing. I love a good brown liner. I think this, they can shape the eye really nicely without it being too over the top. This is a drier formula, I'm not going to lie. Um, it doesn't just glide on and super pigmented. There's a bit of like pulling, a bit of a uh, little bit of tugging, a lot of layering that's needing to happen. But this sort of feels like I'm using an eyebrow pencil. No, definitely an eyeliner. I didn't get that mis mixed up. All right, I'm just going to say I'm not I'm not loving this eye look so far. I'm hoping the mascara is going to make it look amazing because at the moment, I think one of the most disappointing things that I've used so far is this brow is this look, it's an eyeliner. <laughs> I think brow pencil in my head because it's like the consistency of a brow pencil. I feel like it's quite tough and not super pigmented. Like I can imagine myself using this more as a brow pencil than um, an eyeliner. I like how small and precise it is so you can actually get the wing looking nice. I feel like if you've got a big sort of really creamy pencil it's hard to get a nice shape so this can get a nice shape. It's just a lot of building up and a lot of like scratching to um, get the product on and the fact that it also doesn't go on the waterline it's really limiting so I feel like this is not worth my time and effort um, but I will keep using it and I'll confirm that down the track but that's my vibe so far I'm sure it's budge proof because it's so dry that once you've got it on your eye it's probably not going to move but it just wasn't I don't love the effect and I don't think it was a nice experience all right mascara time the big mood mascara and it is a big tube like this is a massive tube I like the purple but it is big um the wand looks fine. It's a nice dark brown, so I don't like it when they're too light brown because do, you don't get the definition, but um, all right, my first impressions. I feel like the eyes are lacking in this whole makeup look. I think the base products were the best. Um, I feel like this wand, <laughs> it's like so massive, and then it deposits such like a natural amount of mascara definitely not a big mood it's a big wand with a small result mm. it's build 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 come on this giant mascara wand is not the greatest for the lower lash line as well like I do use mascara on my lower lash line every day and this is just I'm like a fraction of a millimeter away from constantly hitting my face I've done it a little bit try coat number two realistically I like a mascara that you only need one coat to get a decent effect 
if I have to use two, sure, okay. I'll make it work if I'm trying to use up the mascara, but it's generally a sign of a mascara that I will not repurchase. It's fine with two coats. I just think the wand is massive and the effect is minimal. So not, again, super impressed with this just yet. I think the eyes are letting the team down here, um, but let's go on to the lips. So this is the Hydrating Core Lip Shine and uh, it's very cute. So it's got like a color around the, the edges and then this like raised heart center. Uh, it's not a unique concept. Um, a lot of brands do them with like circles. Um, I think I've seen them with hearts as well, but it is cute and it was fairly affordable. Um, let's check this color out. Okay, it's definitely my lips were better, super sheer. You need to sort of work at it to get the products that are melting on your lips. Smells like melon. Mmm. Smells nice. This is not like watermelon in my opinion, it's just like general melon. Um, and it reminds me a lot of um, the ring pops back in the day that were like the melon ones. I love them. This. The scent is very nostalgic to me. I like it. This color is really nice. It's an everyday color. The shine, it looks pretty and healthy, but it also feels nice and sort of slippery. It's not sticky. So it's a nice, this is a nice product. I like this. Pretty. All right, I was gonna take this off and put um, the glossy lip color on, but I think for today and the day I'm gonna have, this is a lot more appropriate. It's a really, Pretty color, it feels really comfortable. I don't really want to take it off. Um, and look, I've, I've got some mixed things. I think the eyes really let this sort of first impressions down. Um, just running through, I really like the base products. I think the foundation feels thin and set and nice and not dry. Um, so the Camo CC Cream, I think it is, and the color was a good match for me. So the color I have is light, 210N. I think it's a nice one. Nice, affordable. Look, to be fair, base products in Australia, the e.l.f. ones, aren't that cheap. I think this was like nearly 30 bucks or something, so that's not cheap. Um, but again, I bought it buy one, get one free, so uh, um, but I do think that it feels really nice. To me, if I didn't see what this was, I, you know, I'd be like, yeah, this is definitely a Smashbox or Too Faced. Like, I feel like it's that sort of range of quality when it comes to base, but we'll see how it wears and I'll talk about that more in my recap. I understand why these were recommended. I think the under eye, it's a bit of a luminosity, a bit of brightness, so it sort of hides some dark circles, but not like cakey matte full coverage. I think it's a really nice daily concealer, this Flawless Brightening Concealer. And I really like this powder. I think for a sort of glowy setting powder. I think this is really good. It's a really smart idea. Again, I've only really tried sort of setting powders that set down matte or ones that are really, really shiny. They have a lot of luminosity to them and they almost look like a powder highlighter. Whereas this just keeps the glow to the skin, but it sets it like a normal setting powder. So I think this is a really nice, these are, these are really nice products. If you told me that these were Laura Mercier or you know, Charlotte Tilbury or something like that, I would believe you besides the packaging, obviously. So these are probably some of the more, more surprising things. Um, I think I heard too much hype about these. Um, the bronzer definitely, I like, like the color of it, but um, I think it just needs more pigment. Um, the blush is very pretty. I think the shade's really lovely and, um, you know, it blends nicely as well. So these are nice, but I'm not like blown away by them. The brow products are really functional, look good, perform well. Lip products really lovely. So I think these are the types of products that you can definitely save a bit of money on instead of going for a $30 tinted lip balm. Like this one is, is lovely. It works really well. I think where I'm most disappointed, which is not a surprise obviously throughout this video, um, I feel like the eye products, especially the eyeliner and the mascara, they're just not that great. And I feel like, again, these for me so far are really overhyped, but I'm hoping I fall in love with it over the next week or two. So, so overall, this look is fine. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on how things wear throughout the day, um, but I can definitely say that there's some areas that quite impressed me, and then other areas where I'm like, yeah, this is sort of what I expect from cheaper makeup. But yeah, I'm gonna use these more over the next week or two, and um, I'll give you a good, thorough review of these products 
um, in sort of like a best or worst sort of elf video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.